So people send me samples to try out a lot of the time. Usually it's not like the actual producers, it's just nerds who watch the channel and want me to try something. And usually the samples come in these little two ounce bottles. So I basically got an ounce to take notes on and an ounce to shoot with. Um, but a very, very kind person uh, recently sent me these things. Um, these, these are like 200 milliliter things. Um, uh, so you know who you are. Thank you very kindly. So my, uh, my sample bottles seem to be getting bigger as I keep doing this. Uh, one of these days, I got, I'm guessing I will get up to, you know, full-size bottles a la Whiskey Tribe, but I'm really hoping the channel doesn't get to that point. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, the, the other fun thing about these, aside from the sheer heft of the bottles, is what's in them. Um, so basically, I, I think at least two of these came from auctions because I can't think of how else he would have gotten these. Um, but they all represent uh, uh, Finn or, or Mar from, you know, the eastern France, basically. So what we've got is a, a Finn de, uh, de Bourgogne uh, from Jacques Coulot, um, whose Mars I've tried in the past. This is their 25-year-old, the... Uh, uh, Le Grand Age. Um, so, I'm gonna pour a little bit of this, bottled at 43%. More, more about, I don't know a whole lot about any of these, but um, uh, I shall talk about them. And I've got a uh, Mar de Champagne, uh, Champagne, I should say, <laughs> Champagne. Um, From Pomery, uh, who were the first uh, house to make a brute champagne, by the way. So they're kind of the ancestors of the extra brute, uh, brute nature, hardcore champagne movement you are seeing these days in wine. And finally, I've got a very, very old uh, Mar de Bourgogne from uh, Domaine de uh, Haute Cornière, um, again in Burgundy. Now, uh, yeah, I, I'm suspecting these two are from auctions because this one, um, there's a, he, my, my benefactor wrote 1980X on this, which I imagine is not a vintage. I imagine that's when it was bottled. And this thing has a vintage of 1953. So this is by far the oldest thing I've ever thought, tried on this channel. Anyways, let us go down the line here. I'm going to start with the, the, the Fin de Bourgogne because that should be the lightest, but we shall see. Um, all right. I'm a little terrified of knocking these things over uh, in the course of the filming, but I'm going to avoid that to the extent that I can. All right, uh, let's get this going. So um, this is 100% Pinot Noir. They still make this. You can still buy this. I, I, uh, um, I imagine it's probably not very expensive either. They, they don't tend to get very expensive. Um, Jacques Hulot, a little tiny producer in the south of... Um, uh, of Burgundy. Um, I really like their, their Petit Mar, but their, um, their big one, the Authentique, really bugged me with the amount of dosage in it. So we shall see uh, if this is similarly cloying or not. The nose is great, though. The nose is, is impressively weird and just kind of beautiful. There's, there's sour uh, berries, but really like, like wild berries dried flowers, some like over stewed Darjeeling tea. And lots of, well, kind of rancio kind of notes. Like it just smells like old polished Victorian furniture. It's interesting. I, I huh. Uh, the way this noses, there's hints of, of the kind of clean floral character that I, I expect from must base brandies, which is what uh, uh, a fin has to be, right? It's 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 not based on pomace. It's just you know basically grape juice on lees that you are then fermenting and distilling. Um, um, but this smells a lot stinkier than that. So I'm wondering if this was maybe aged in old mar barrels or maybe um, maybe aged in old pinot noir barrels. I don't know. There's like a kind of a nutshell, like a chestnut shell aspect, a little bit of a, a soy sauce thing, like really funky, heavy soy sauce. 
Um, some some minerality. There's a couple of rocks in this. There's some uh, like uh, there's something green in here too, but it's not stems. It's more like almost like a stewed broccoli kind of note. And and I know you're gonna think I'm crazy. Orange beef. You know when you go to like P.F. Chang's because there's you know it's like 9:30 and you're just hungry and there's nowhere else to go to eat. And you go to P.F. Chang's and you get the orange beef and it's just you know, completely disgusting Americanized Chinese food. There's a little bit of that in this. And actually, now that I've said it, now that's all I can smell. Um, that's totally like Americanized orange beef. And maybe like one cinnamon stick thrown in there too. It's a, it's a fun nose. I'm just, what I'm worried about is the palate and particularly whether this is dosed or not. Hard to tell. It does feel on the back end a little bit syrupy, um, just a hair bit, uh, which is kind of out of the character with the otherwise very austere, kind of funky, weird nature of this. Um, so part of me is thinking this is very, this is lightly dosed. But if it is, it's not, it's not ruining the effect. Um, this is, this is still holding together very well. Again. Uh, <laughs> Much weirder than you would expect a great must-based brandy to be. So I'm, I'm imagining something as fun as going on with the casks. Yeah, lots of like sour, it's not sour berries now, it's more like almost sour dried fruit, as, as if you like dried out some fruit that still has some acidity left. Um, some Darjeeling, again, lots of black, lots of black pepper rocks um not really cinnamon there's a lot of cardamom in here though um a little clove more of that kind of rancio old furniture note um there's a honey thing but it's like bitter honey it's like kind of bitter sour honeydew kind of honey um more flowers it's very it's very musty it's very um i mean it's very mar like which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, yeah, this has got to be like X Mar casks or something like that. Um, anyways, I am, in, I am uh, really enjoying this. It, it feels a lot cleaner than a lot of the Mars I've, I've had at this kind of age, but um, you know, who knows? Uh, so I'm gonna give this a squirt of water. The only thing bugging me about it is, is that that little hint of syrupiness on the back end. So I'm gonna this like three drops and we shall move on. Cool. Hopefully that didn't rock, uh, uh, ruin my palate. All right, moving on to our first vintage entry. Pommery et Grenon, uh, Mar de Champagne, Champagne, uh, 1980 sometime. Bottled at 42% alcohol by volume. So um, uh, again, Pomery, a very old champagne house, I think from the 19th century sometime. Uh, they've also started up some business in California. I don't really like the California stuff at all, but the regular champagne is fine. So I imagine this is a mix of pomace from Pinot Noir and um, Chardonnay, maybe with some, some, some Meunier thrown in there as well. Um, but let's see what happens. Marge Champagne. Here we go. Ooh, fun. Now, okay. Now it's getting really weird. Now that we are in proper weird Mar territory. Um, there's a lot of lemon lime on this, actually. So, like, basically homemade sour mix is what this smells like. But then, like, really musty old wood. Um... And lots of, it's very floral too. Um, much more floral than the, the, uh, the Jacolo. Just batches and batches and batches of, of dried, dried flowers. Um, some prunes, black pepper, 
um, grape stems. It's got kind of a little touch of greenness. It's actually grape stems this time, not broccoli. Hints of like cherry syrup and a little clump of dirt, like old dirt in there. I mean, it smells very mar. Um, the floral notes, I'm guessing, the extra aromatics, um, the floral notes, the lemon lime thing, I'm guessing that's from the Chardonnay in this, um, but I'm not really sure, who knows. All right, here we, uh, here we go, on the palette. Ooh. Oh, that's fun. Very floral, very floral. Um, lots of dried flowers, like old wood, old furniture, but also just old, like old musty wood that's been sitting in a pile. Over stewed English breakfast tea, um, some prunes, dried cherry, um, honey, but it's like Manuka honey this time. There's a touch of lime zest kind of thing kind of going on. Um, almost like, has anyone made like orange skin liqueur? That has to exist, right? Uh, like lime skin liqueur, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, so, so like if that existed, imagine there was a little drop of it in here. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting. It's not as pronounced and like sour as, on, as, it, in, as on the nose, but um, it's definitely present. Oh, this is, I really like this. It's it's a hair short on the finish, but I really like this. By the way, so I should say, uh, I, I'm making these videos not because I expected to go out and find a, a 1980s bottle of um, Pomery Mar, but just to give you some idea of what kind of deals might be out there, uh, if you're willing to, to you know look around the, the auctions for old bottles of stuff. I mean, I doubt he my benefactor really spent any money on any of these. Um, I, I'm guessing it was just more like, you know, grabbing stuff, you know, old bottles from estate sales and things that people didn't want anymore. Um, and who's, you know, because who really cares about a Mar, even if it's from, the, from you know, 70 years ago. All right, uh, all right, we'll come back to that in a second. And we are moving on to the Mar de Begonia the, from uh, Haute Gournier. Which is an estate I do not know at all, but again, I'm guessing this is uh, all Pinot Noir. But we shall find out. No idea when this is bottled. I did see a picture of, of uh, uh, a bottle that looked like it might have been like this. So, I, But I'm guessing it was bottled circa the, maybe the 70s or 80s. So we're talking 20 to 30 years old. But we'll see. Here we go. Oh... A very pretty nose. Um, there's beautiful wild berries and um, kind of some sprite notes actually, like like again lemon lime, but it's not as it's not as floral as the previous one. And lots of mineral uh, minerality, just piles of rocks. Um, clove, cardamom, musty wood. Um, some tea notes, but it's a little bit unusual. It's more like um, like rubos. Uh, no, there is there is some actual, like, little Darjeeling leaves in there, too. Um, some topsoil. Um, and some, like, kind of uh, aromatic fruity notes. I don't know how to explain. It smells a little bit like a, a, like a really nice rosé champagne, a little bit. So that kind of yeasty, bubbly, like watermelon strawberry sort of thing you know what i'm talking about not as not actually not as complex on the nose as the previous two but the 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 fruit thing is so beautiful that um i almost don't mind let's see what happens on the palette 41 percent. this is yeah 41 so a little bit less than the others Mostly follows the nose. Um, so we're on like wild berries, sour berries, 
some lemon, lemon lime, and rocks. Um, some again, some some kind of musty notes, some Darjeeling, um, that kind of bready rosé champagne thing. Hmm. Hmm. So like Krug style rosé champagne. Uh, some throw some dirt in there. Uh, a couple of rocks. Uh, it's not actually all that green though. Like this is by Mars standards, there isn't a whole lot of like stemminess or, you know, like vegetal herbal qualities going on here. It's, it's quite, it's quite clean. It's, it's at least as clean as the, as the Jacolo, which is not even a Mar. Um, there's some clove and nutmeg happening. The more I have of this, the more it's like, well, it's it's a really good mar. It's really clean and kind of easygoing, but at the same time, it doesn't feel exceptional and special. Um, it doesn't feel like it's got as, as much of a personality as a lot of these other ones I've tried. Um, but we're going to give it some water, give it one more shot. Like literally two drops. That's 41%. I can write the strength on my notes. Hold on. Okay. And we'll go back through. Uh, back to the Jacolot. Um, so what I'm worried about, often when I when I add water to something that's dosed, uh, it makes the, the kind of the dosage, the, the additives come out even more. And I'm really hoping it doesn't come out because I was really enjoying this, this the first time through. Um, okay, here we go on the nose. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting um, pancake syrup, and I'm not kidding. That's it. Totally smells like pancake syrup, um, and beneath that, orange beef. But the best orange beef ever made. So, like, if if your P.F. Chang's cook were some kind of master, here we go. Um, plus a lot of flowers, not as many flowers as in the, uh, uh, the Pomery, but they're there. It's a kind of like a red flowers kind of thing. It, it's, it's fun. It's extremely fun is what this is. All right, let's, uh, give this a try on the palate. Ooh. Oh, that actually got a lot. Uh, not a lot, but it got better on the palate. Um, it's actually bringing the most sour of, like, ever, of anything else here. Like, this is sour and grungy and musty and old and, and quite, quite long and peppery on the finish and dry. There's, if I go, so the, the syrupiness has not become more prominent. Um, it's almost as if that's held steady and everything else has kind of exploded a little bit. Um, it's still a little bit annoying and a little bit bothering me, but not that, I'm, man, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I mean, I can't, it's not a, like a, a textbook well-made spirit by, by any means this feels like i mean hand this to other to other reviewers and they, they'll probably think this is a mess but um i absolutely appreciate the, the weird mix of things this is thro this is throwing at me and i'm gonna give this an 86 minus out of 100. really good really enjoyable um, and the best thing I've had from, from Jacolo so far, actually. So maybe I should get, be giving them more of my, of my attention. Okay, moving on uh, to the Pomery. Uh, Mar of Champagne. Now with a little bit of water. Let's see. Uh, 
Um, mostly the same on the nose. Maybe some extra dried fruit on top of like some dried berries or something like that. But it's still, you know, mostly just very floral, old wood, old dried flowers, that kind of thing. On the palette, though, here we go. Oh. Way more floral on the palette than even it is on the nose. Um, doesn't have... Okay, so most of what the water is doing is, is, is kind of giving it a better mouthfeel and extending the finish a little bit. Um, the flavors are pretty much the same. Uh, at this point, this is this this little guy is just edging out the others for me. It's it's these are very close in quality, but that extra dimension added by the flowers, kind of hanging over the mustiness and the the woodiness and the minerality. And the dried fruit and the sour that extra dimension there is really kind of what's winning me over here not by much i don't like it this that much more than i like the, the jacolo but i'm still going to give it an 86 flat as opposed to the 86 minus yeah um quite good a good effort from pomery circa the, the 1980s and again like this is just if you're willing to hunt for stuff like this at, at estate sales, auctions, things like this, they they will not cost you much money, and they are they can be really rewarding. All right, let's move on to the Haute Cornier, uh, Mar de Bourgogne, 1953. This was actually kind of going into the second round um, in third place for me, so let's see if it's picked up any steam. On the nose, it actually recedes a little bit with water. Um, yeah, mostly getting uh, you know, like musty old wood, a little bit of, of kind of fruit, red fruit, those tea notes, a little bit of tobacco notes that are kind of mar, classic mar notes. I mean, this is this is a noble old spirit, but it feels like. Um, it's not happy with the treatment I'm giving it today. This is this is something that's just very happy to be imbibed after a good cup of coffee, and uh, it doesn't understand, you know, being in a Glen Cairn glass with a drop of water added to it. It doesn't get it. All right, let's see what's happening on the palate though. Yeah, at close to 70 years of age, this is still alive and kicking, but um, it's certainly not the most uh, profound and multidimensional effort I've ever had. Um, I like it, though. It's, it's, it's very, this is a very kind of, it's still a, a classic Mar de Bourgogne. It's still nothing, you know, your, your, your grandma is not going to enjoy this, but on, within that spectrum, this is like a very clean and kind of easier example of a mar. Um, it actually reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Albert Moreau um, mar that I reviewed, oh God, a long time ago. Uh, one of my first mar reviews, actually. Yeah, this is more about the wood and kind of the the sense of darkness and, and fruit more so than about, you know, crazy um, green tea, tobacco sort of mar notes. Um, but it's okay. I'm going to give this 85 out of 100, and uh, I'm glad I got to try it. Um, nice little mar here. So again, this is... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not suggesting you try to run out and grab these bottles, these particular bottles, because... You probably can't, but look for stuff like this. Look for stuff, you know, out on auction that isn't what people are looking for. That isn't some, 
you know, dusty Ardbeg or some, you know, ancient wild turkey or something, that's uh, may nevertheless still be well worth your time. Um, these kinds of dusties are are worth looking at. And uh, that's about all, I, all I'll say. What were my scores? 86 minus for the Jacolo. Pomery gets a flat 86. And the uh, Cornier gets a good, honest 85. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, and again, thank you, dear, dear viewer, for sending me these things. And uh, that's it. Bye. Cheers.